Praise the Lord. Our name's good. Glad to be in my house this morning. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. We had to dismiss Thursday night because of sickness in the church. Amen. But glad everybody's doing better. Amen. Uh, still continue praying for Cassie. Amen. And Josh. Amen. Josh is still coughing his head off. And we. And Cassie. Amen. Is still coughing. Can't hardly breathe, amen. So uh, remember her. Also remember Carrie this morning, amen. Her and Jeff, amen. That God make a way, amen, so they can move, amen. Jeff get closer to work, and Carrie, amen, won't be by herself, amen. Out there, there's won't be uh, the other people around her, amen, that she can talk to and stuff, amen. So pray that God will work that out. Also remember Brother Randall and Sister Tasha. And uh, Sister Vicky today, amen, is their travel back home today, amen, back to Mississippi, amen. So uh, remember them in prayer. Uh, also remember Brother Terry Garrett, amen. I don't know what's been going on with him, amen, but I ask you to remember him. Sister Patty, amen, she's been in the hospital, amen. So uh, Brother Terry's wife, so remember her, amen, that God will touch her body. Amen. Remember, Brother Jackie stamps this morning in prayer. Amen. Uh, he needs a uh, touch in his body also to the, this morning. Amen. Also remember Angela Angela up in uh, North Carolina. Amen. She's doing better. Amen. But pray she wants to see her husband and her two sons saved. Amen. So continue remembering that. Remember Sister Elizabeth uh, Wintringer and Brother Warren. Amen. He's really been having some bad problems with his uh, uh, sinuses and his leg. Amen. They're, they're uh, postponing surgery until the 29th of December. Amen. But they're going to try to get him in before then. Amen. They sent me a message. They said they was wanting to try to get here by the 10th of December, but they didn't know if they were going to make it or not. Amen. But said, please be praying for them. Amen. She'll get her strength back after she had the COVID. She ain't got much strength. Amen. So uh, remember them this morning. Amen. Remember all the churches around this community this morning. Amen. Remember uh, Sister Joe up there at Faith Revival Church there in North Carolina. Continue remembering them. Amen. In your prayers. Amen. They need our prayers. Amen. Somebody else this morning got a prayer request. Brother Darrell said, remember a friend of his daughter's in the hospital with Down syndrome. Her name is Brittany. And uh, they, she's got two different viruses and doctors know uh, And she's not doing very, very good. Yes, amen. Remember that. Also remember Brother Darrell and Sister Francis this morning. Remember Sister Francis, also Brother Darrell's wife, and his son Artie. Amen. Remember his sister. Uh, I just had it there. Marjorie Burkett. Amen. Remember her this morning. Remember Sister Carly Pope. Amen. And her family. Amen. In your prayers. Also remember Sister uh, Gloria Stetson. Amen. Down in Texas. Amen. And God continue touching her. Amen. I was glad to see that she was watching our live stream. Amen. So uh, I ask you to remember that. Remember Brother Don Levi this morning. Amen. In your prayers. Amen. He's doing a little better. Amen. But he's still uh, weak and everything. Amen. So remember him. Somebody else this morning. Remember that, amen. Somebody Maryland. else. Maryland. Yeah. Remember me and my family, my lost loved ones, that were on here. I'm sick out of the Yes, amen. Remember that. Somebody else. I just want to let everyone know that Lord Jimmy, he's doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else. 
Amen. Remember the lost. Amen. There's a lot of people that's lost. Amen. Some people can't even find their way to church. That means they're lost. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good joke. Y'all didn't like that one? Amen. It's the truth anyway. Amen. I just figured I'd make something funny about it. Amen. It's the truth. Some people's lost. They can't find their way to church. Amen. But there is lost souls out there. Amen. I, I talked to some. Amen. Just the other day. Amen. And they said, well, we might try to come out to y'all's church. I said, well, you're more than welcome to come. Amen. Uh, they've never been in church, but they're invited to come. Amen. So uh, remember them? I talked to someone that's all, that walks the streets all the time at night. they got a place to lay his head. Amen. He'll find a place somewhere, but he says, I'm going to try to come to y'all's church sometime. I said, well, come on. Amen. amen. Listen, we got to tell people, amen, they need to be in church. Right. Amen. Jesus said, if you read the Bible, in which I have been reading the Bible this week, amen, Jesus said, amen, that uh, that you have to uh, clothe those that are naked. Hmm. You have to feed those that are hungry. You have to give them something to drink if they're thirsty. Amen. So we got a we got people out here, amen, that's that ain't got coats to wear this winter. You got an undercoat at home, amen. You see somebody that needs a coat, give it to them. Amen. Because see, there was a guy just here just a few days ago. Amen. I've seen him sleeping on the sidewalks and you try to give him help. You don't want no help. Well, he seen got into a house that was a vacant been vacant ever since Misty's brother moved out of it. And uh, the roof's falling in on it. He decided he would go in there and try to stay out of the wind and try to stay warm. Put him some charcoal in a aluminum pan. And while he was asleep, the charcoal burned through the bottom of the aluminum pan and set the house on fire. And he tried to get out of the window to escape and run away. And the law got him. Now he's in jail. Amen, because they said he set the house on fire on purpose, but he didn't. He was homeless, trying to stay warm. Amen? Guess what? The judge better go leaning on him, amen, because he's a homeless man. But I look at it this way. He's got a place to live now that he won't be out in the cold. Amen? He's got food to eat. Amen? God made a way to put him in somewhere where he stayed warm. Amen? But our city, amen, Hopefully, the new governor that we're going to have, he's a big radio mount. He owns a radio station, WCLU. Hopefully, mayor, mayor. The, mayor, the mayor, the mayor, amen, that he will do something about stuff like that. Amen, start helping people. Because if you don't, God will make sure you don't help nobody. Amen. Uh, you don't believe me? Look at Mark Zuckerberg. He's losing income every day. Losing people every day. He even put, he's laying off a bunch of people. Amen. Right around Christmas time, he's laying them all off. Amen. They're having a fit. Well, guess what? God said he was going to do it, and he's doing it. Amen. You don't play with God. You don't make fun of God. You don't talk about God's people. It comes home to you. Amen. So re remember Mark Zuckerberg in your prayers. Amen. Because he needs to be saved. Amen. Remember our governors, our senators, our Congress. Remember the leaders of our country. Amen. They need to be born again. Not saved. They need to be born again like Jesus told Nicodemus. See, he was a ruler of the Jew. Nicodemus was one of them big men. Amen. Just like our governors and senators and Congress is. Amen. And our leaders. Amen. They got to be born again. Anybody that gets right with God, they got to be born again. Jesus told us there in the Word, amen, you must be born again. Amen. So remember them, amen, tonight, today. Remember this service, amen. Revival's come and gone. Done been a week. But guess what? That don't mean revival stops. Just because we didn't have church Thursday night, that don't mean we can't have church today. Amen. It's true. 
Put in what you want out of it, and you'll get something out of it. You don't want to put in, you ain't going to get nothing. Amen. Right. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your spirit. Amen. Right. Right. Your faithfulness. Amen to God. Right. Amen. It, it, it's good, amen, to have a place to come and worship. And it's warm. Very warm. Amen. Those sitting in the back going to find out it's very warm. Amen. But uh, pray for Sister Sherry. Amen. She's still coughing real bad. Amen. Uh, this new virus that's going around, it's not the COVID. Everybody's always oh, COVID. No, it's not the COVID. Amen. You don't hear about much of that anymore. Now you're hearing about the flu, the flu, the flu, the flu. The flu. What happened to the COVID? Well, the president said the COVID is done over with. Amen. Now they got the flu, the flu, the flu, the monkey pox. Amen. See, people don't realize, amen, the flu, amen, is just as bad as the COVID because the flu, if you get pneumonia with the flu, guess what? You get put in the hospital and you'll get put on the ventilator. Amen. You'll get put on the ventilator. So, uh, listen. Amen. This is the time of the year that the, the viruses are going around. Amen. This is the time of year of the weather. Hey, we could be like them up there. Amen. Be shoveling out 77 inches of snow. But God seemed fit that we didn't get none. Amen. That like the fact snow. Can you imagine 77 inches of snow in Barron County? Nobody wouldn't be going nowhere for days because they wouldn't get out and work. Amen. They say, well, we don't know what to do about that because we never had that much snow. Amen. That's a lot of snow. Amen. But pray for those people up there because two people have already died. Amen. From out shoveling the snow. See, when you're out shoveling snow, your heart speeds up. And if you you got a bad heart, if you got a bad heart, amen, you It'll get you. Amen. So remember those families. Amen. Also remember those families of those young kids that got killed in Iowa. Amen. That got stabbed to death. Amen. They were college kids. Amen. And uh, don't know why. Don't have no clue. Amen. But they were massacred. Amen. And they were young girls. Amen. So, uh, Remember their families, amen, in prayer because their families are in turmoil right now. Amen. They send their kids to college. Amen. One family said, well, we, we know our kids. We know she likes to drink and party, but we don't hold that against her. <coughs> amen. But listen, it ain't all about going to college to drink and party. Amen. But a lot of our teenagers are doing that. Amen. And they're getting around the wrong people. Amen, and they're they're messing with things that they don't need to be messing with, and when you mess with things like that, they come after you. Amen. So uh, I just ask you to remember them. I'll turn that turn. Amen. 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 Uh, but uh, remember that families in prayer, Amen, because they're they're really going through some things. Remember the police officers, Amen, that's been shot. Amen. They're shooting them every day. You don't watch news, you don't know about it. Amen. But they're shooting our police officers every day. So I ask you to remember Brother Cody Allen in your prayers. Amen. He's taking on a new job in Georgia. Amen. As a deputy sheriff. Amen. And in Georgia, amen, they're rough. Amen. They're bad down in there. Amen. So uh, he wanted prayer. Amen. That God would give them travel mercies. Amen. To move and stuff. That everything will be all right. And he said, thank God. Amen. And he, him and his wife got back in church a year ago. Amen. That they made their mind up, hey, we got to get back in church. Amen. So, uh, listen. The devil's on the rampage. He's trying to destroy God's preachers. Amen. And if he can do it, he'll do it. Right. Amen. That's right. And uh, I was studying last night and God spoke to me. Amen. I was uh, watch. I was posting that if you've seen my Facebook post, I was posting some Bible scripture things, some little prayers and little sayings on, on Facebook last night. And the Lord spoke to me and told me to go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. Amen. And I began to read that. Amen. And that's what's going on in our churches right now. 
Amen. People just don't realize that Satan is a roaring lion right. seeking whom he may devour, church, and he's trying to devour God's people. Amen. And within the church, amen, not just out, but inside the church, he's trying to destroy people by people in the church. Amen. If he can get one, amen, to say something about somebody else, then the other one will say something about somebody else, and another one will say something. Amen. For you know it, then you got confusion in the house of God. Right. Amen. And the Bible said that God was not the author of confusion. Amen. amen. But the enemy is. Amen. So pray. Amen. For the churches around. Amen. They're, they're, they're all over the world. Amen. amen. They're not just in this little town. Amen. They're all over the world. The devil is destroying. Amen. Why? Because preachers are saying it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that. Amen. And the devil's eating that up. Amen. And he's doing what he said. They're saying it's okay to do. Amen. So uh, I ask you, amen, to remember uh, Noah, amen, in your prayers. Amen. She, uh, her leg, amen, this time of the year, cold as it is out, amen, makes her leg hurt real bad. Amen. And her hands. Amen. So uh, remember her this morning. Amen. Anybody else before we pray? Yes, amen. Remember uh, Tammy Brown and Timmy, amen, Brown this morning, amen, in your prayers. Amen, Brother Timmy is still having problems, amen, with his heart. And Sister Tammy, amen, still having problems with the flood, getting up around her lungs, amen. Also remember Brother Warren Trailer, also, amen, he needs some strength, amen. So remember him this morning. Remember Brother Herbert Ballard. Amen. This morning, he'll probably call Michael and we'll come to church tonight. Amen. So remember Brother Herbert. Sister Brenda said she's been uh, hurting, amen, in her legs and her back, amen. So remember her this morning, amen. Anybody else before we pray? Unspoken request by the raising of your hand. Amen. You pray at your seat or pray at the altar.
I ask Brother Michael, amen, to come on up, amen, take up this morning's tithes and offerings, amen. Give what God lays on your heart, and God will bless you for it. Go ahead. Great Savior, Father, we come to you again this morning, Lord. Give you praise, glory, and honor for another beautiful day you've given us. Come to your house to worship you, Lord. I pray, Lord, we ask you, please bless this offering. Please bless those that have to give, and equally those that do not. I pray, Lord, we ask you, please use this offering for the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord, those that's going to help Sister Nora, amen. Amen.
to praise God. Amen. Worship the Lord. Amen. All right. Mr. Bike, we're going to light the God's work this morning. Sing, hold up your hands for us this morning.
Amen. The battle we've been fighting, amen. We won't fight it no more. Amen. Hallelujah. I was listening to a preacher the other night. Amen. And talking about hell and how hell's full of this and hell's full of that. Did you know there's a lot of preachers right now, amen, if they don't change their ways, they're going to be there too. Right. right. Amen. Read the Bible. The Bible said many, amen, will confess in those days, did we not cast out devils? Did we not prophesy? Amen. Did we not lay hands on the sick? Did we not do this? Did we not do that? And we'll hear God say, depart from me. I never knew you. Right. Amen. Uh, why is this? Brother Morris, you feel like singing this morning? All right, that's all right. I don't, I don't want to make you. I just want to ask you if you felt like it. Amen. God understands. Amen. All right, brother Michael, you got us one.
Heavenly Father, God, you're in hell, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord, we stand upon your word. God, we're sending the word right now. Lord, you said you sent your word. And your word healed them. Heavenly Father, God, we're sending the word this morning. God, we all know the Lord. Lord, touch him. Lord, from the top of his head to the shoulders of his feet this morning. God, we rebuke that sugar in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord. God, we came in the whole agreeing together, Lord, this morning. God, we stand in the mood of your morning time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. God, touch him right now, Jesus. Touch right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Let that healing virtue, God, begin to flow through that body. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, bring that sugar up, Lord. God, bring it back to normal, God. We ask right now. God, take that uh, passing out, Lord, away from him right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask, Lord, touch in Jesus' name. Touch our brother, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. getting to come. He's been very, very sick. Amen. I know a lot of people fight sickness, but when you get up in the age like we are, Jackie is, a lot of people, it's harder for you to get over a sickness. And I mean, it's not like him. I've been with him 40 years. This may be the third time I've seen him this sick. And how he even worked all last week, I don't know, unless God just picked him up and took him every day because as soon as he came in, he got a bath, he'd eat a bite and go to bed. There was three days he didn't even eat. So I didn't let him know that I was worried about him, but I was very worried about him because I've really never seen him be that way. And at one point in time, he even told me that he felt like he was leaving here. That's how sick he was. So I thank God for reaching down and touching him. Amen. Every time we're in need of him, he's right there. Right. Every time we're in need of him. I look around and there was Jesus. Yep. That song may not mean a whole lot to somebody else, but he is there. A lot of times when we don't even expect him to be, he's right there. Amen. I thank him this morning. He means all in all to me. He is my everything, and I appreciate him this morning. I want him to know I thank him because he's my be other half. That makes me hope. And I give God the praise.
man who needs amazing kind of
Verse number one. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will forever with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in every in the very heaven. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Now this is God speaking. Not Jesus, but God. Right. Amen. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. See not. The heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Amen. Brother Michael, read number six. Number seven, Sister Charlotte. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about them. Trees number eight. <coughs> Brother Daniel, number 11. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. Sister Misty, number 12. The north and the south thou hast created them. Tabor and Herman shall rejoice in thy name. Brother Wayne, number 13. Thou hast a mighty heart, heart, heart excuse me. strong is thy hand and high is thy right hand. Sister Connie, number 14. Justice and, just, justice and judgment are the expectation of the throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy place. Sister Darling, number 15. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk with the Lord in the light of thy hand. Brother Morris, number 16. Amen. I want to. I want you to listen to verse number one. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Amen. I looked up the word faithfulness. God spoke to me this morning and he said faithfulness. My people lack faithfulness. My people lack 
lacks faithfulness. Amen? Faithfulness. Faithfulness comes from a plane of trust and loyalty. Well, loyalty, amen, means to be faithful. Right. Amen? <coughs> Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things what? Oh, and the evidence of things what? Not seen. Not seen. Amen? Faithfulness, amen, God likes people to be faithful right. to Him. You know why he wants you to be faithful to him? Amen. Because he is faithful to you. Right. Right. Hmm. Trust God in faithfulness. Number one. Not be afraid <coughs> in times of suffering. Or in the times of enemies, in clothing, in doing not fear. Sickness, trusting in the Lord. Step number two, stand firm in faith on the promises of God. Step forward, number three, step forward in faith and victory in Christ and seek God deliverance provision salvation healing and faithfulness as I was studying this this morning amen well last night in this morning amen God said my people lacks faithfulness Amen. We go to church and we go to church. Amen. And we see people. Amen. That's not here. And you see people. Amen. You go to other churches and you know the church used to be full. Amen. And you don't see nobody there anymore. You watch live streams. You don't see nobody there. Amen. What happened? God said my people like faithfulness. They want me to be faithful to them, but they don't want to be faithful to me. Amen. He said, amen. He enjoys, amen, when we sing unto the Lord. Amen. Because that shows him, amen, that you came, amen, to be faithful. Amen. They won't stay in the house of God. Amen. They get up, they leave, but God said, I want my people, amen, to be faithful to me. Amen. Just like I am to live. Amen. I said, Lord, if you're going to get me in trouble this morning. God said, who do you listen to? Your congregation or me? He said, I want you to be faithful. Me to be faithful. Just like Brother Randall said, we get it before y'all get it. I want God to heal Nor. He said, be faithful to me. I want God to do this for me. He said, church, be faithful to me. Amen. Amen. God, I want to live holy. God, I want to do this. He said, then be faithful. Amen. Faithfulness, amen, is loyalty. Loyalty, yes, amen, Lord. is to show up and show God that you are going to be faithful. Amen. amen. I know sometimes, amen, we get sick. And we can't come to the house, Lord. I understand that. But when somebody else sees you out or running the roads, amen, and they call the pastor and say, Pastor, I thought they were supposed to be sick. Why wasn't they in the house of the Lord with y'all? Right. God said, I want my people to be faithful to me. Well, God, I want you to be faithful to me, but... God, I got this, I got to do, and God, I got that, I got to do. And Lord, I got this, I can't pray right now. I've got too much on my plate, Lord, I can't do this. And Lord, I can't read the Bible right now. I'm busy trying to get other things done. God said if my people would be faithful to me, I'll be faithful to them. Amen, I got it before y'all did. Amen, I said, oh, me, God, I wanted to get back reading what I was reading. And God said, no, I want my people to learn, amen, that they got to be faithful right. to me. Amen. Not 
to the pastor. Amen. Not to the to the congregation. Amen. But be faithful to God, the Creator. Amen. Above all heavens. The heavens even worship God. Amen. The angels even worship God. David. Amen. Even though David had sinned against God. Even though David was a murderer. Amen. David stayed faithful. Amen. He repented of his sins. Uh, turned himself around. Uh, and he began to be faithful to God. Uh, because God said, David, if you be faithful to me, I'll be faithful to you. Uh, amen. He told Abraham. Uh, he said, Abraham, if you'll do what I told you to do, uh, if you'll be faithful to me, uh, and you take Isaac up that mountain, uh, oh. I will give you a blessing. Uh, I will show you what I can do. Abraham said, all right, I'll get up in the morning and I'll be faithful. Amen. I'll get up and I'll go up that mountain, Lord. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Faithful. Faithful. Amen. Number two. In verse 89, chapter 89, in verse number two. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness uh, shall thou establish uh, in every he in very heaven, in the very heavens. Uh, I have made a covenant. I like this one right here. Uh, this one really got me this morning. Uh, he said, I have made uh, a covenant uh, with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. See love. Amen. Listen. Amen. He said, I. Amen. <laughs> I like that one. Amen. He said, I have made a covenant. He's made a covenant with you. Amen. You are his chosen. That's why he said, I made a covenant with him, David. Amen. I made a covenant with you, David. Amen. You're my chosen one. You're the apple of my eye, David. Amen. I see what you've done wrong. I see the sin that you committed. But David, you went and you repented of that sin. You didn't play around in that sin. You didn't go out. Amen. Looking on the back of it, somebody else. Amen. But you quit it. Amen. And you was faithful to me. Amen. You are my chosen. He said, I will be faithful to my chosen if they'll be faithful to me. Amen. We got to be faithful, church. Amen. Boy, I didn't know I was going to get into this one, but God did. See, I've been reading some things that's been going on in the Bible. And I said, Lord, I said, this ain't got nothing to do with what I've been studying on. And the Lord said, just hold up just a minute. I'm going to show you something, son. In the Word, I'm going to show you something. Amen. You know why a lot of husbands and wives Amen. Have problems. You want to know why they have problems at home? You want to know why they fuss and they argue? Amen. Because they're not faithful to one another. Amen. They think, well, I don't have to be faithful to him. She don't have to be faithful. Amen. To him. He don't have to be faithful to her. Amen. And guess what happens? Amen. There's a conflict there. Amen. And guess what happens? Amen. That husband says, my wife ain't going to be faithful to me. I'm going to leave her and I'm going to find one that will. Amen. That's not being faithful. Huh? Amen. Being faithful. Amen. Is being loyalty one to another. You'll work things out. Huh? Amen. You won't run around and get somebody else's husband. Huh? You won't run around and get somebody else's wife. Amen. You won't flirt around with somebody else's husband. Huh? And you won't flirt around with somebody else's wife. Amen. Because faithfulness huh, has to begin at your house. God said you got to be faithful to one another. Right. He said if there's conflict between a husband and wife, 
then the marriage ain't doing what it's supposed to do. But he said, if you'll pray together and be faithful to one another, well, you say, Brother Miller, I, how did you get, I said, God, how did you put that in there? But see, faithfulness is more than just being faithful to God. Right. And then you got to be faithful to your friend. Right. You got to be faithful, amen, to your husband, your wife, amen, to your children. You know, a lot of parents ain't faithful to their children. Come on, church. Amen. They'll stick them in a room and give them an iPad or a telephone. And leave them alone and say, all right, phone, you babysit my kid. Uh, amen. You iPad, you take care of my kid. Uh, amen. While I'm out here doing what I want to do. Amen. And guess what little Johnny and little Susie's watching? Uh, guess what they're looking at while you're not watching them? Uh, amen. Guess what they're doing when you're not paying attention to them? Uh, amen. They're doing things that's not right. Uh, and you wonder what's going on. It's because mamas and daddies ain't faithful to their children like God told them to. Uh, amen. He's and be faithful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Plenish the earth. Right. Take care of your children. Be faithful to them. Feed them when they're hungry. Clothe them when they're naked. Put stuff on them. Be faithful to one another. A marriage is a two-way street. It takes two to tangle.
first. Amen. And be faithful. And I'll be faithful to you. Amen. I said, okay, God, I'm going to put you first. I'm going to be faithful to you, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'm going to do it. He said, if you'll be faithful to me, I'll be faithful to you. Amen. You be faithful to your wife. Love your wife. Give her good gifts. Show her kindness. Show her love. Instead of showing her hate every time you turn around. Instead of popping off at her every time you turn around. Amen. But you begin to show her passion. You begin to show her love. Amen. You begin to be faithful to her. Amen. You go out and know she don't like flowers. Buy her a flower. Amen. Just to show her how much you are in love with her. How faithful you are. Amen. If they don't like, if they like candy, give them a bar of candy. Amen. A lot of women love chocolate. So get them some chocolate. Amen. Your wife, not somebody else's. But this is what happens to the church. You know why God has pulled back his faithfulness from the church? Because the church ain't being faithful to him. They're not being faithful to God. He said the heavens are being faithful unto me. Even to my son, the Almighty. You read a little bit further in that chapter. <laughs> Amen. And it says, even the Holy One of Israel. Who did I tell you the Holy One of Israel was? Was Jesus. He was faithful to his father. Yeah. Right. See, God showed me that his son was faithful to him because he always said, I'm about my father's business. I'm not about my business. I'm not about my church. But I'm about my father's business. Yeah. My father which is in heaven. And the disciples said, well, who is the father? And he said, you mean to tell me you've been with me this long and you don't know who the Father is? I and the Father are one. A son and a dad is one. A mom and a daughter is one. Amen. A husband and a wife. The Bible said when they get married, they become as what? One. One. One to be faithful to one another. Did you know? Yeah, I like this one. This one you guys get to. I like this one. Everybody like this one. How many atoms did God create? Oh, I didn't hear that. How many atoms did God create? All right. How many E's did God create? One. Well, does that mean that uh, you're supposed to have more than one wife? Does that mean you're supposed to not be faithful to your wife? If God wanted Adam to have more than one wife, he'd have put more women there. He'd have took more ribs out of Adam and made more women for Adam. From the beginning, God said, I want it between a male and a female. I want one a man and one woman together as a husband and wife. I don't want them to go out here and divorce. I don't want them to go out here and find somebody else. I want them to be faithful to one another. I guarantee you I'm going to hear about it anyway. But that's all right. Yeah. They don't want me to get started because I'll take them to the Word of God. Yeah, Amen. Lord. I'll show them that it's wrong. You cannot commit adultery on your wife. Yeah, Lord. Well, Brother Miller, what is sexual immortality? That's homosexuality. No, it's not. Yeah, uh-uh. Brother Wayne, it's not. You know what sexual immortality is? Can I tell you? Since y'all don't know. It's fornication. Sex before marriage. Commit adultery. That's what sexual immortality is. Y'all are talking here, you want to say it. You say, Brother Miller, what are you talking about? You've got to be faithful to one another as you are with God. Amen. You can't go out here and commit fornication on God because that's not being faithful to Him. You can't go out here and commit adultery on God. That's not being faithful to Him. Amen. When you go out here and do the 
things of the world. Amen. You're not being faithful to God. Amen. I said, Lord, you're putting all of this together. You're tying all of this together. But I didn't know that you were going to take me to Sodom. See, you know why a lot of people don't know about the Bible? Because they don't look the words up. Right. They don't search it out and find out what it means. Oh, you committed sexual acts. You've done this and you've done that. Amen. Can I tell you something else? Somebody said, Brother Miller, can we kiss before we get married? Is it a sin to kiss before we get married? Is it a sin, Brother Miller, for us to cuddle? This shouldn't be taught it. Why shouldn't it? It's in the Bible. Read the Bible. It talks about sex all through the Bible. If you read it, it tells you how to please your wife in the bedroom. It tells the wife how to please the husband in the bedroom to be faithful to one another. That's what's wrong with churches today. They ain't got enough faithfulness in a marriage. They ain't got enough faithfulness in one another. Amen. So they want to get somebody else. Come on, church. And then they want to hide behind the pulpit, amen, and say, I'm faithful. Yeah, I'm faithful to God. Yeah, All along, go home and sleep with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Yeah, another man's wife or another man's husband. God said, why is my people being faithful? Because sexual immortality has hit the churches. <laughs> sexual mortality. Amen. Brother Michael G. has caused a lot of homes to separate. Can I tell you what else sexual mortality, uh, mortality is? Immortality. Amen. It's when you know my son when she says open the door. Hey, Pen. When, when two people, husband and wife, are together. Come here, sister, y'all. Let me go and run the boys. Both of y'all, come here. I ain't never used both of y'all. Go and use y'all today. These two right here have been married for 40 years. Amen. 40 years. Amen. 40 years. If... They wasn't faithful to one another. This hunter here would go out and try to find him another cougar. Amen? This cougar right here, if she wasn't faithful to this one, she'd be out here trying to find her another one. Oh, no, brother. Yes. Amen? Because God said, I want you to be faithful to one another. Amen. Be faithful in all things. Amen. Be faithful in your love. Be faithful to your bedroom. Come on. Brother Miller, that ain't, that ain't, that don't need to be preached in the church. They're teaching your kids in school what you should not let them have in school. But you're letting them allow it. But see, 
When God joins somebody together, He said, let no man put it asunder. He said, if you do not abide by my commandment and my law that I gave, what was the law that God gave? Thou shalt not commit what? Adultery. That's His law. That law is established. That law is in the Old Testament. That law is still there. But the Mosaic law was whipped. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, amen, that Mosaic law was gone. But God's law is established. And He said, I do not believe in adultery. That's what God said. But then Jesus came along and even said, He don't believe in it. But, he said, if the husband is not faithful, and the husband, amen, desires to leave, he's committed to go. And if the wife decides to marry somebody else, She's an adulteress. Oh, is that being faithful? No. He said faithfulness, amen, it's got to start in the home. It's got to start in the house of God. See these two right here? They've had their ups and downs. See us right here? We've had our ups and downs. You see those two back here? They've had their ups and downs. Everybody in here has had their ups and downs. But that sexual immortality, a man is a woman. If she's not pleasing with her husband, if she's not satisfied with him, she'll go after somebody else's husband. And the Bible says she'll even start flirting with you. See, that's what sexual immortality is. If they want to flirt, they'll have them. The demons of hell will call them to start flirting. A little pet here and a little pet. Amen. When that little rubbing, amen, starts to begin to show a little compassion, amen, it begins to show a little affection. And then the person that's been rubbing and the person that's been patting, oh, God, you know, I'm going this way with it. Amen. And they'll start getting involved in it. Amen. And then, because I can tell you something, I had a, ne a nephew, amen, that come down here. Amen. And he went to this church. Uh, and this woman, her husband was a truck driver. And he was gone. Uh, and my nephew began to start showing her some confection. Uh, amen. He began to start showing her affection. Uh, amen. He began to start petting on her. Uh, amen. He began to start rubbing on her. Uh, he began to play with her hair. Uh, amen. Just like Samson and let Delilah done to him. Uh, and she began to do it back. Uh, and before you know it, they began to commit adultery. Uh, and then they began to commit for Fornication. Amen. Why? Because flirting leads to fornication. Amen. Wake up. You need to hear this. We all need to hear this. this Amen. God said, I gave you who I want you with. Don't go out here and look for somebody else. He said, but if the husband is not a believer and the wife wants to get rid of him because he's not a believer but if the husband don't want to leave the wife ain't supposed to make him come on he'll be pleased to stay with her vice versa if the husband amen and the wife amen wants to don't want to leave, and the husband says, I want to kick you out. She don't want to leave. Amen, vice versa. He's not supposed to get rid of her. Bible. Right. It's Bible. Right. First Corinthians chapter 7. I'll give you the word. Y'all think. You don't believe me? Read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Read it for you. Say it. Well, Brother Miller, I, I don't 
Come on now, listen to me, man. You can't tell me that a woman ain't passed by you and you say, what's your good? You sit here and tell me no, I'm going to call you a liar. Woman, you can't tell me that you ain't seen a man that you said, whoa. Because if you do, you say you don't, I'm going to say you're a liar. Because the Bible said all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Nor was talking about that woman that time in Walmart that had them uh, yoga pants on so tight. She said, honey, did you see that? I said, I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking. God gave me somebody. Why do I want somebody else? Again, why do I want somebody else? I've been married to her for 42 years. Amen. Why do I want somebody else? 41, going on 42. Why do I want somebody else? I don't want to know. I don't want somebody that's going to nag me to death. Because these young girls out there now, they'll nag you to death. Amen. They're bipolar. They're schizophrenic. Amen. They're crazy. Man, they'll be good to you one minute. Next minute, they're knocking your brains out. And then they'll say, well, how did that happen? Mommy, mommy. Oh, a rock fell out of the sky and hit me in the head. Well, I don't believe that, Brother Miller. Well, you better wake up and smell the coffee. All right. Amen. Amen. My wife's cousin married some crazy old woman younger than him. She was only 19. Crazier than a loon. I told him, I said, she's bipolar. She's schizophrenic. You better watch her. They were playing Guitar Hero. Having fun. Next thing I know, I get a phone call. Come here, come here. I said, what happened? He said, she's killed me. I said, huh? I go up there and she split his head like a watermelon from there all the way down to there. Took 20 stitches, 20 staples in his head where she laid him open with that Guitar Hero because he was beating her. And she didn't like it. That's his afraid that bipolar kicked in. <laughs> well, Brother Miller, I don't believe in stuff like that. You better get back into your books. You better get back into the Bible and begin to read the Bible. Right. And then because, amen, it's nothing but a demon straight out of hell. Amen, that demon will cause you to do sexual acts to one another with not your husband or not your wife. Boys and girls, boyfriend and girlfriends, them demons will come and say, why don't you just pet her? It ain't going to hurt you. Just pet her backside a little bit. It ain't going to hurt nothing. I'll just pet him a little bit. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Amen. The next thing you know, it leads to other things. Amen. It leads to fornication. Amen. It leads to sex before marriage. But it don't hurt to touch them every once in a while. Hey, let me tell you something. God put places that he don't want you to touch until you're married. Be playful to your boyfriend and girlfriend. Be playful to your husband and your wife. That's why I said churches are splitting up. Amen. Because the pastor can't be playful. Amen. To his own wife. The vice versa. The woman can't be playful. Amen. To her husband. Amen. Because they want to go out here. And split somebody else's home up. Wow. They say God put us through a season of having fornication. God put us in a season to have sexual immortality. You show me in that Bible. The only thing in that Bible said God said sin was fun for a season. He didn't say to go out here and have sex with every other woman. He didn't say, woman, go out here and have sex with every other man. He said, be faithful to the one that you got. Be faithful to God. Quit going out here flirting with the world. Quit going out here committing fornication with you. Amen. My phone got an update. I said, thank you, Lord, for the update. If I get to go on Facebook, and I went through the videos, and I said, block, 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 block. I got to block the 
video. TikTok, you can't block. I was looking at them Bible things last night. And guess what? The old devil wanted to try to pop up there. So not today. You try to block, you cannot block. And I reported it. Guess what they told me? Sent me a reply back and said, we don't find that offensive. You don't find a woman popping her breast out in offensive? But you find me telling something about Jesus offensive? Come on, there's something wrong with this culture. Amen, there's something wrong with social media. Amen, that they allow ungodliness, but they won't allow godliness. They'll allow perversion, but they won't allow Christianity. There's something wrong. Amen. Forgiving God. Ain't you glad He'll forgive you? You say a cuss word, and right then and there you say, Lord, I shouldn't have said that. And you ask Him to forgive you, He forgave you. But Amen. if you let it go on and go on and you didn't ask forgiveness for you, lay down your head to go to sleep at night, guess what? That forgiveness is not there. You have to pray harder. Amen. He said, Shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn. Be exalted. All right, so Brother Daniel, verse 25. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the river. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about his son being faithful to him. Right. Sister Misty, verse 26. And he shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Uh oh, who is he talking about right there? Anybody know? He shall cry unto me, Thou art my what? My father. Jesus said, If you see me, you have seen my father. What did God say Jesus was? He's the rock of our what? Salvation. Salvation. Amen. Brother Wayne, number 27. Also, I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. Uh oh. Did y'all hear that? God called him his firstborn. Higher than the kings of the earth. Amen. He said, I'll set him up as a king. Amen. He'll be a master. Hallelujah. Sister Connie, verse number 28. His coming. What's his coming? The Ten Commandments. Amen. Sister Darlene, number 29. This seat also will I make in your prayer and his throne as the days of He's talking about Jesus. Right. Talking about his son. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Brother Morris, number 20, another 30. If his children, who are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be God's children. Right? 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 Amen. 
And what did he say? He said, if my children forsake my law, what is my law? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's husband. Thou shalt keep the Sabbath day holy. Amen. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house or anything in the house. That's where a lot of Christians go wrong, amen, because they sin, because they covet what their neighbor's got. Well, my neighbor's got a prettier Christmas tree than I got, so I'm going to get me one like it. sin against God. Even though we sin against God, listen, he said, nevertheless, my loving kindness, ain't you glad for that loving kindness? Ain't you glad for that mercy? Will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail? He'll never fail us. Jesus said, I'll go with you all the way to the ends of the earth. Amen. I'll never pay, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But you will me. Even though you commit a sin, even though you let that little cuss word slip out, and you said, Lord, forgive me. He forgave you right then and there. His mercy, his loving kindness never failed you. His faithfulness was always right there. He said, if my people will be faithful to me, I'll be faithful to them. I'll be faithful to them. Amen. Ain't you glad to know what the Word of God said? Well, hmm. verse number 34, I think. The Thank you. 
promise you'll stay with you, David. David, as long as you do what I ask you to do, David, I'll be right there. He's a live community church. As long as you do what God asks you to do, God's going to be faithful to you. When you're not faithful to God, amen, God's not going to be faithful to you. Amen. Church, Amen. Said that 
they worshiped that man. He was a preacher. They, he was their pastor. They, they held him up. They said, we're going to see him in heaven. No, he's in hell today. Right. Yeah. He's in hell today. Amen. Because he wasn't faithful. He wasn't faithful to his wife and he wasn't faithful to God. <coughs> or Brother Miller, you can't say that. Suicides of the devil. Amen. Suicide, when you wake up, you're waking up in hell. Being in torment. Same self -murder. Amen. Verse number 40. Thou hast broken down all his edges. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. Verse 41, move away. All that passed by the way is for him. He is a reproach to his neighbor. Well, I got to get on that one. Those that commit adultery, those that's not being faithful, church people are petting them on the back. Saying, why well, you just didn't do nothing wrong. It's all right. We'll just sweep it under the rug and we won't tell nobody. But we'll just tell, you know, we, we'll just let it be hush. We won't speak a word about it. We'll just keep it silent. Don't tell nobody. Don't say nothing. Oh, Lord Jesus, Brother Miller, you just set up fire. You just set up fire. I didn't. God said, I want my people to be faithful to me. He said, listen what he said right there. He said, all that pass by the way is full. Full, they're full of right and left. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. God forgave you of that. It's all right. You just go ahead and it'll be okay. We'll prophesy to you and we'll say, Thus saith the Lord. He's going to bless your ministry more than he ever did. You've got somebody that's going to help you that was sent from God. Hogwarts! Hogwarts! Hogwarts, the Holy Ghost! that I got, amen, it ain't going to let you get out here to commit fornication. Right. It's not going to let you get out here and be unfaithful to God. It's not going to let you get out here, amen, and sleep around and try to prophesy. It's not going to let you speak in tongues. Right. Come on, church. Amen. That's why churches, amen, are doing what they want to do because they see these ones that's supposed to be holier than anybody else. And they wonder why they can get by with it and they can. Because too many people wants to pass it by. They want to spoil them. He is a reproach to you. Even God said it was a real reproach. You cannot do it and think it's going to be all right because it's a reproach against your brother and sister in the house of God. Come on, church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 42. Verse number 43, Sister Darlene. Thou hast also turned the end of his sword and hast not made him stand in the valley. Did you hear that? When you be faithful to God, he'll turn that edge of that sword around so it won't cut you. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you be faithful to God, be faithful to your wife and your husband. Amen. Be faithful to your church. Be faithful to your members. Be faithful to your brothers and sisters. God will turn that edge of that sword around so it won't hurt you. Amen. Listen. He'll make your enemies be to rejoice. Mm. Hallelujah. Verse 44. Sister Donna. 
Or Brother Morris? Well, God knows if you take this, your eyes are going to be open and you're going to see everything. 
you're going to be able to lie to everybody. So she took a bite of it. Her eyes was open. She goes to her husband. She goes to Adam. She begins to pour it to Adam. She begins to eye candy. Oh, come on, baby. You know, you know, you want to come to me. Oh, come on, baby. See, Adam let me see me. But Eve knows what Adam looked like because she, her eyes was open as soon as she took a bite of it. Her eyes was immediately open so she saw what God had made Adam to be like. Naked. See, the woman was the first one to see a man naked. Y'all didn't know that either, did you? Then she said, come on, baby, just, baby, just. Come on, sugar, just take a bite of this. It'll be so sweet. <coughs> just like the devil. Oh, come on, honey. It ain't going to hurt for us to have a threesome with somebody else. It'll be all right. Come on, honey. It'll be okay. God ain't going to look at us that way. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Hmm. Did you know the Bible speaks against that? Did you know that the children of Israel, amen, when Moses went up on the mountain to get the Ten Commandments the first time and he came back down the mountain, guess what they were doing? The Bible said, amen, they were in sexual immortality. They were doing ungodly sex acts. Uh, they were committing, amen, uh, amen, what the Bible, amen, will speak of. Uh, amen, they was having an orgy. They were doing things they wasn't faithful to Moses when he went up on the mountain. They wasn't faithful. They wasn't faithful to God. That brought them through the desert. Amen. It brought them across the Red Sea. That fed them manna from heaven. That fed them quail. Gave them fire by night and a cloud by day. They seem to have sexual activity. Well, Brother Miller, I didn't know all that was in the Bible. It's because people don't read the Bible. Come on, church. They wasn't being faithful. And you know what he done? He threw the Ten Commandments down and broke them. So when he went back up, this time God said, I'm going to write it with my finger. He broke through the tablets. He took his finger and he began to burn into the tablet. Did you know God was the first engraver? Thank you, Holy Ghost. He did the engrave in those tablets that he hewn out of the mountain. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Why? Because they had that golden calf. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not steal. Amen, husband, you can't steal somebody else's wife because you're a thief. Wife, you can't steal somebody else's husband because he said you're a thief. It's about being faithful to God. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Verse number 46. Brother Wayne. How long, Lord, will thou hide thyself forever? Shall thou wrap burn like fire? How long will God hide himself? Forever? Shall the wrath burn like fire? Well, God don't cause the wrath to fall. He said, I'll cause wrath to fall upon the children of what? Disobedient. He said, he said, what did he say? He said the wrath of God will be poured out on the children of disobedient. Amen. He also said he would pour it out upon the wicked the same as he would the righteous. Amen. His chosen one. If you don't want to do what God wants you to do, you don't be faithful to him. He'll pour his wrath down upon you. He'll cause your automobile to quit running. He'll cause you, your pocketbook to be empty. You can't also take one of your children and you get David. 
Paul. Verse number 47. Sister Connie. Remember how short my time is. Whose time? God's time. How short is it? I wouldn't want to be caught doing I wouldn't want to be caught in a bed of fornication or a bed of adultery and Jesus called my number. But where are you going to be? You can't get up there and say, God, will you let me through that season? But he's going to say, I did not. I, I told you to be faithful to me. Be faithful to your wife. Not somebody else's woman. Well, God, you uh, you took that woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. This is the way they'll, they'll tell God. Well, God, that woman that was caught in the very act of adultery in the Bible, God, you took and you forgave her. You forgave her because she was caught in the very act. But guess what? She didn't die. But if you die in the bed of adultery, before you get forgiveness, you're going to stand before him and you can complain all you want to. You can even talk about the woman at the well all you want to. Well, Lord, you, gave, you forgave her. Why, well, she had five husbands and the one she was with wasn't her own. So it didn't hurt me to get out here and get me two or three more. I'm going to give you a little Bible lesson this morning. Abraham and Sarah couldn't have no children. Amen. Sarah was barren. She couldn't have children. So she had a concubine, Hagar. If Sarah said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And I said, I'm going to give you the okay, Abraham to commit fornication and, and adultery with Hagar. Yeah. So you can have you a child. Uh, so Abraham accepted what she said. But God didn't. Now you listen. So Abraham committed fornication and adultery with Hagar. And she bare a son, and his name was called Ishmael. Well, see, Ishmael was growing up. And Sarah didn't like Abraham having much to do with Ishmael because it was making her mad. But then the angel came down and told Sarah that she was going to break forth and have a child. She laughed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have a child as old as I am. Man, I've done went through the flower of my age. I've done, I've done went through the menopause. I've done done everything. There's no way that my age can be fertile. You have lost your mind. And the angel of the Lord told Abraham. And Abraham was like, oh, yeah, she's old. How can you have a child? And you know what God did? God lets open up Sarah's womb. 99-year-old woke her up and put a baby Isaac inside of her. And God even told Abraham what he was going to be named was Isaac. This is Bible lesson number one. <laughs> See, Abraham wasn't faithful to God when she said, go ahead and take Hagar and do what you want to. But oh, when Isaac was born, Sarah got jealous of Ishmael. And she told Hagar and Ishmael to leave. May Abraham make them leave. And did you know Ishmael was an evil boy? Ishmael, amen, done things that wasn't right. Ishmael, amen, was born out of sin. Come on. Isaac, amen, was born of Abraham's flesh. His life to him. Come on. 
more. Isaac was going to take over his daddy's inheritance. Ishmael wasn't going to get nothing because Sarah didn't want him to have nothing. But Abraham didn't leave him alone. Because Ishmael was part of Abraham too. Amen. But he was committed during sin. See, Abraham had to go, the priest had to go and pray. Back then, the priest went and prayed. It. See, they went all year long committing sin. Wasn't faithful to God all year long. But then that priest would go into the Holy of Holies and he would ask God to forgive them of all their sins for that whole year. Ain't you glad that we got a forgiving God that we don't have to go all year long and be afraid that we're going to die in our sin? Amen. Because he said, I'm going to give you a sacrifice. That's my son. And then you no longer have to be. You've got to be faithful to him. We're almost done. Oh, brother, I'm glad we're almost done. Well, verse number 48. Sister Darlene. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hands of the grave? See what? Verse 49. And we pray. 
grace. God save her. Lord, bring her back to you, God. Don't let that sheep go astray. Go get her, Lord. Five years. He finally poured her in. And she's been faithful. No answer came. The days turned to weeks. The weeks turned to Brother days. Mike. And I cried, oh, Lord. It seems that you he said, heard my prayer. He's wandered out in the wilderness. And the shepherd, the good shepherd, Went out with that shepherd's hook. And he said, Whoa, Michael Jean. I got you. I want you. I want you to be faithful to me. If you'll be faithful to me, I'll be faithful to you. And he's been faithful. See, God said, if you'll be faithful, I'll be faithful to you. He's the God that can't fail. This is the dream I got. So cast on the cares. I got it this morning. So hot. This is the dream I found. That's the world. I put a prayer on the internet. I pray for those that are sick. I found a healing prayer. I thought, well, that sounds good. I'm going to post that. If you'll be faithful, God said, I'll even heal your sickness. Somebody said, Brother Miller, God's not going to answer that prayer that you've been praying. Guess what? I still pray. Thank the Lord for that promise. Because it's coming. God's time is coming. Sister Jackie McCoy, I'm going to be faithful to God. Something else i got to tell Mary a couple. If your wife or your husband is fasting, listen to this. You ain't supposed to do, you're not supposed to do anything in the bedchamber while you're fasting. That goes against the word of God. Brother Miller, you got personal this morning. Oh, I'm just telling you. A lot of reasons, a lot of homes ain't faithful because they don't have faithfulness in the bedroom. A husband will sleep in the next bedroom and a wife will sleep in the other. Amen, that's not being faithful to one another. He's the God that can't fail. Amen. Let the older teach the younger. Amen. It has to begin in the house of the Lord. You can't defile the bed that God has given you. You can't defile it. You got to be faithful to it. Amen. Bless you, Heavenly Father. God, I have preached what you laid on my heart this morning. Lord, I pray, God, I have done it the way you wanted me to do it today. I thank you, Holy Ghost, for bringing things to my remembrance. I thank you for teaching me this morning. I thank you for leading me this morning. I thank you for being my guide. Lord, I thank you, God, for your presence. Help us to be faithful to you, God. Help the church to be faithful. God, I ask it in the name of Jesus. Lord, you be faithful to them. 
God, I thank you and I praise you. Lord, I pray, God, that you would move. God, I'm holding the family. Bless them. Bless them. Come and bless them to go. Lord, because you said, Lord, that you would be faithful to us. God, if we'll be faithful to you. But if we're not faithful to you, God, you will Lord us. In other words, God, you won't do nothing for us. God, I thank you, God, that you are forgiven, God. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your love and kindness, Lord. God, I ask God you just go with us. Help us today. Lord, as we preach and tell people about the Word of God. Lord, that the covenant, by the commandment, your law, God, you said, shall not be broken. And many are breaking your laws, God. Help us, help us not to break your cup. Help us, Lord, not to break your command. Lord, let us be the chosen. Lord, that you have chosen your children. Let us be the church. God, that you want us to be. God, let us let the Holy Ghost reign inside this place. God, that we won't let sin rule. And we won't let sin enter into this place. God, we thank you and we praise you this morning. God, I pray, God, that you move upon the congregation this morning. God, you bless you. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we Church, be faithful to it. This altar's open this morning. Got there and made a heart of fire.
walk into church. Yes. But the reason for that now is because when we moved here, one box was missing, and that was his clothes. So I have to, we have to rebuild his clothes up so that way he can come. Amen. Yeah. I might rebuild my clothes up too. I'm done. <laughs> Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else.
Amen. We thank you. We pray. Pray that God will continue blessing y'all. Big old live, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Amen. I don't know how many's got saved on Big Old Live. There's probably been some, amen, that we just don't know about. Amen. Facebook Live, we appreciate y'all. YouTube, we appreciate y'all. Amen. Those that tune to me later. Amen. We have several that watches our videos after we go off. Amen. But we appreciate y'all. Uh, Brother Darrell, Sister Francis, and Sister Cardi, and Sister uh, Marjorie. Amen. In California, they watch us all the time. Amen. They're faithful to God. And they're faithful to their church, even though we were that far away from each other, but they're still faithful. Amen. They've been with us from the get go. We appreciate them and we love them. Please tune us back in tonight at 6 o'clock, a little after, and get everything set up. Amen. Come back expecting God to do something great. Amen. Uh, just be ready to receive something from God. Amen. Tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. In the shadows, tell somebody about Jesus. In Walmart, tell somebody about Jesus. Did y'all see that young man singing in Walmart that people posted on the internet? Of that young man singing? This love that I have.